Hey everyone, uh, I gotta admit, I'm feeling pretty <coughs> sick today. I feel kind of achy all over. Whatever virus or bacteria got into my bloodstream, it had to make it past my innate immune defenses. My skin, my stomach acid, if it got in that way, a bunch of white blood cells like neutrophils and natural killer cells, somehow it's lingered on past all of those. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, but the good thing is that I've got specific immunity that's developing right now, so hopefully I won't have a problem with it next time. So this video is all about specific immunity or adaptive immunity. My immune system is learning how to fight off this particular pathogen. Calling in the big guns, you might say. <coughs> so let's jump to the, the whiteboard or whatever and get started. So let's say we have a pathogen invading the body. It could be a bacteria, it could be a virus but it's something in our bodies that shouldn't be there. I've got the pathogens drawn in green, and on the surface of the pathogens, I have these little orange circles, which are the antigens. Antigens are just little proteins that are on the surface of the pathogen that we can use to identify what that pathogen is. All of the bacteria and viruses that can make it into our body have different antigens that present on their surface. And so if we can learn to recognize each bacteria or virus's antigens, we can fight off that specific bacteria or virus. And that's what this whole process is about learning to recognize a particular virus or bacteria, and then recruiting cells that are ready to fight it off as quickly as possible. Now in this diagram on the top left, we have a non-specific response. That means that this top left part of the diagram, all the stuff that happens there, would happen no matter what the pathogen is that's entered into our body. It could be this specific one I've got drawn in green, or it could be COVID, or it could be chickenpox, it could be anything. Then we have a humoral response, as well as a cell-mediated response. Those are both specific immune responses, meaning that we're gonna develop some cells there that are specific to this pathogen. It's like they're just gonna train in fighting off this one pathogen and not worry about anything else. They're gonna be specific to this pathogen. And so this is all about converting from our non-specific response to our more effective specific responses to the pathogen. So the first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna have a special cell called a macrophage. Macro means big and phage means to eat. So this literally means a big cell that's gonna eat the bacteria or the pathogen that's invaded our body. You can see it wrapping its cell membrane around that pathogen in a process called endocytosis. We call it specifically phagocytosis, and phago just meaning to eat, and cyto meaning a cell, so this is literally means to eat another cell. So that macrophage or big eater cell is gonna phagocytosize the bacteria and it's gonna store it in what we call a vacuole. At that point, it's gonna take these little compartments called lysosomes that are filled with enzymes and it's gonna inject those enzymes into the vacuole and those enzymes are gonna break apart that pathogen. It's gonna break it into little pieces and some of those pieces will be the antigens that are found on the surface of the pathogen. The macrophage is gonna have a specialized protein which is called MHC2 or major histocompatibility complex two. And that MHC2 protein is gonna grab onto some of those antigens and present those antigens on the surface of the macrophage. Because they're presenting this antigen or saying, hey, here's how you can recognize this pathogen. We're gonna call the macrophage an antigen presenting cell. It's presenting the antigen. Now, once the macrophage is presenting this antigen, another cell is gonna come along called a T helper cell. Now, the macrophage and the T helper cell are both white blood cells. They're just different types of white blood cells. And the T helper cell is going to use its specialized protein called CD4 plus to recognize and learn what that antigen looks like. Now, on the diagram, I drew that as an orange circle, but in reality, it's detecting the shape of it. It's not just gonna be a circle like that. It's gonna be a protein, which fold lots and lots of times to make these really complex and strange shapes. It's learning what that shape is. At that point, this T helper cell, which now knows what the antigen looks like so it could recognize the pathogen, it's gonna clone itself. It's gonna make a whole bunch of copies of itself because the more of these T helper cells that we have, the better we're gonna be able to fight off the bacteria or virus that's entered the body. Now again, these T helper cells have just learned this specific pathogen what it looks like. So we're now into what we call specific immunity, which is gonna be this humoral response and our cell mediated response. Okay, so all of these T helper cells, they're gonna go around now and release something called cytokines. So cytokines are these little chemicals. Cyto means cell and kine or kinna 
means to move. And so these are going to sort of move other cells into action. That's where they get the name cytokines. They cause cells to move into action. One of the cells these get released to are called B cells. Now for B cells, which are another type of white blood cell, you need to remember the three Bs. The first B is that these mature or differentiate and become B cells in the bone marrow. T cells, although all white blood cells come from the bone marrow originally, T cells are going to develop or mature into T cells in the thymus gland, hence the name T. So B cells bone marrow, T cells thymus gland, that's where they get their names. The second B is that B cells are going to make antibodies, B for bodies. And antibodies that B cells make are going to be specific for the pathogen that we're trying to fight off. The B cell has learned what this pathogen looks like. It's been called into action by the T helper cells and their cytokines. And it's going to make antibodies that are going to latch on to this specific pathogen. Now this needs to be specific because if it wasn't, if this B cell was making antibodies that latched onto just any old protein on the surface of a cell, then that would be attacking our red blood cells, it would be attacking our normal healthy cells, that would be bad. So this has to make antibodies that are specific for this pathogen. Now that'll do a couple things. One, it's going to neutralize this pathogen. Think about it, if that pathogen is covered in these antibodies, then it can't infect other cells and it can't grow, it can't do any of the things it normally would do in our bodies. Having these antibodies also makes it a target for some of our own cells. If other macrophages or natural killer cells or neutrophils come along and they see something with a bunch of antibodies attached to it, they know it's time to strike. So other cells will kill off this pathogen more easily because of the antibodies. The third B to remember is that this happens in the fluids of our body, and an example of that would be our blood. That's what humoral response means. Humoral means happening in our fluids. So that includes our blood, but also includes our lymphatic system, our lymph nodes and lymph vessels, as well as the interstitial fluid, which is all the fluid like between the cells throughout our body. So remember for B cells, they mature in the bone marrow, they make antibodies, and this all happens in our blood. Now this is all well and good. We're going to fight off this pathogen really well with our newly specialized B cells that are making antibodies for that pathogen. But we want to be able to fight off this bacteria or virus again in the future and not have to get sick again. So a lot of these B cells are going to stick around as what we call memory B cells. They're just going to be chilling in our body, hanging out, ready to fight off that pathogen if it ever makes it into our bodies again. We're waiting for you. So that's our humoral response, and we're gonna be ready to fight off that pathogen again if it ever gets into our body, let's say, a year or two down the road. Now, this is all happening in the fluids of our body, but unfortunately, some of our cells may have already been infected, and the antibodies can't really make it into our infected cells to fight off the pathogen that's infected those cells. So we have to have a separate system or a separate response which is going to take care of our cells that have already been infected. So here we have a normal cell in the body. This could be a skin cell or a digestive system cell or whatever cell in the body. And it's been infected with this bacteria or virus. So we have to do something about that. This is especially important for viruses because what viruses do is they make it into our own cells and they'll use the machinery of our cells like ribosomes and stuff in order to make lots of copies of themselves then they'll kill the cell, burst open, and go infect a bunch of other cells. So if we're able to neutralize this before the virus is ever able to make copies of itself in infected cells, then we're gonna be able to fight off this viral infection a lot more effectively. Now our infected cell won't call for help like this, but it will present some of the antigens from those pathogens on the surface of it. It's sort of a call for help. So our T helper cells during this are gonna be releasing cytokines, which are gonna stimulate cytotoxic T cells into action. The cytotoxic T cells are gonna detect this antigen which is presenting on the surface of our infected cell, and that's how it's gonna know that this is a cell that it needs to neutralize. So a couple things to remember about T cells. T cells mature in the thymus gland, that's where they get the name T cell, and what they do is they, they kill infected cells. And so this is gonna release these specialized chemicals called perforins, which will break open the cell membrane, and a bunch of enzymes as well, which are gonna kill this infected cell, poor infected cell, this is not how you probably thought the story was gonna end. It's a tragic ending for our infected cells, but for us, it's a happy ending because it's better off if these cells die, if we can kill them off really quickly before this virus is able to replicate and destroy the rest of our cells. So bad for that cell, good for us. And so some of those are gonna stick around as what we call memory T cells. So if we get sick in the future, these are ready, lying in wait, to fight off that particular pathogen. We're waiting for you. And so that's how we go from a non-specific response to developing immunity to some bacteria or virus that we've been exposed to in the past. All right, let's do a quick recap. So we've got some pathogen that's entered into the body and a macrophage or a dendritic cell is gonna phagocytosize or eat that bacteria or pathogen. Then it's gonna release enzymes from lysosomes. Those enzymes will break that pathogen apart into its little pieces. A specialized protein in our macrophages called an MHC2 
is going to grab on to the antigens and it's going to present those antigens on the surface of the macrophage or dendritic cell, which we call antigen presenting cells because they're presenting the antigen. T helper cells are going to come along and the T helper cells will use CD4+, their specialized protein, to detect the shape of that antigen. Once they know the shape of that antigen, they're gonna start cloning themselves. So we have a whole bunch of T helper cells that know what that antigen looks like. The T helper cells are gonna release cytokines to stimulate B cells to make antibodies. And those antibodies will be specific to that pathogen. They'll neutralize it by locking onto it, as well as make it easier for other cells, such as macrophages and neutrophils, to destroy that pathogen. Some of those B cells will stick around as memory B cells so we can fight off this pathogen in the future. And remember the three Bs of B cells. They mature in the bone marrow, they make antibodies, and all of this happens in our fluids, particularly our blood. That's our humoral response. Now on to the cell-mediated response, which is what we do to cells that have already been infected by this pathogen. The T helper cells will release cytokines to stimulate cytotoxic or killer T cells. The killer T cells will detect which cells have been infected by looking for antigens presenting on the surface of those infected cells. Once they detect one, they'll release perforins, which poke holes into the cell membrane, as well as enzymes, which will make it into the cell and destroy that cell so that bacteria or virus can't replicate within that cell and can't go out to infect other cells in the body. T cells, of course, mature in the thymus gland, which is where they get the name T. And some of those T cells are gonna stick around as memory T cells so that our body is able to fight off this pathogen again in the future without having to go through all this process and getting sick again. <coughs> so how convincing was my fake coughing and fake sickness? Do I have a career in acting? All right, thanks for watching. Good luck fighting off those pathogens.